Welcome to the Mac Cross Delta Recap Show. Wrap up edition. This is EXO along with the magical girl Celia Rose and our mecha expert Chad. Yeah, so this is our wrap up show, otherwise known as the Mac Cross Delta Recap Recap. <laughs> wrap up so let's get our overall thoughts Celia um overall Delta was fun to watch it was definitely entertaining and I enjoyed it I'm not sure if I enjoyed it simply because I am a Macross fan and so I'm like yes more Macross content and I'm just you know eating it up as we're going along but I really liked the cast the characters were enjoyable enough for me to watch others on different levels than other characters the Music was pretty solid in terms of Valkyrie's music. I can't say the same for the background music. But overall, I think it would fall probably in the middle of the Macross franchise for me, like in terms of best and least interesting Macross series. I think it would fall somewhere in the middle because it was so strong in the beginning in that first half. And then it just kind of lost its direction and felt like it didn't know what it was supposed to be doing during that second half. What do you think, Chad? Well, as someone who really didn't respond to the preview episode, I was sort of against the series at the starting point. But even now, what the show has ended and we've seen the whole series, I cannot deny that I love the first like half, maybe even the first two thirds of the series. I was just having a blast with it. And that's genuine. And I'll I'll always have that. The last third of the series became choppy and was hit and miss. And uh, there was uh, some missed opportunities with the stories that were going on. Definitely some of the character stories we talked about before, just mysteries and stuff that were presented and didn't really, you know, fulfill themselves in any sort of satisfactory way. The final episode was fun, but it's definitely one of, I think, um, the, the lesser finales for a Macross series. And there was a sort of like a disparity that we're used to seeing as far as mecha action, I think that that was sort of noticeable in this series as well. So I think overall, I'd agree in that this turned out, I think, to be a little bit of a middling kind of uh, Macross series. Definitely not one of the franchise favorites that I would say for, for me personally, but it's also not a, um, I wouldn't categorize it as any sort of failure or anything like that. It kind of turned out a little bit mediocre at the end, which is kind of makes me a little sad because I was having so much fun with it for the longest time. It makes me sad too, especially the way the first half went. I think, yeah, we, we mentioned this before. You actually mentioned I it specifically. A... I remember you saying that you were worried because some of the episodes were sort of like taking away from the, the enjoyment of the series that we had so far because they were sort of like dropping the ball. Mm -hmm. And I was also worried about like how much they're pushing the enjoyment towards the end because they were just taking so much time towards, I think, episode 17 or 18. And if they don't bounce back soon, it wasn't going to be worth the time that we took watching this whole series. And at the end, I, I feel like they did fail on delivering. They just kept killing the episodes with exposition and even more mysteries. Uh, disappointment, mostly maybe, but there's still a lot of stuff towards the end that I was looking forward to. I still enjoy Waki Ray. Uh, overall, even though it's dawn, I kind of miss it. <laughs> Today, I put up a post that said, you know, like, oh, I woke up on a Sunday and there's no Macross Delta. I saw that, yeah. It yeah. kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. So... I didn't know what to do with myself this morning. <laughs> Exactly. I think it was also the show because this is the first time I've done a show where we've done every episode and recapped mm -hmm. it one week after another after another. And it was just like, I kind of got into a habit and enjoyed discussing it and talking about thinking about it, maybe even thinking about it more than the average anime I would watch or just the average television show I would watch, perhaps. It was really kind of special. Cecilia, what would you first change? First thing I would change is oh. my ship would win. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> First thing I would change. <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. Um, actually, I would probably change how they utilize the second half because yes. there were those three episodes where it felt like we were just spinning our wheels. And I know we mentioned this in our last episode too, that those would have been like a great time to not necessarily expand, but just to cover things that required answers or required completion. You know, they could have utilized those three for that purpose. So that way it wouldn't feel like they were trying to cram everything that needed completion in the last 23 minutes that they had for this show. So I think that'd probably be the biggest thing that I change about it is how they utilize that time so that way the story flows a little bit better but I have seen like some responses online and actually from some people that I have been talking to about waiting about six months and then going back and watching Delta all together and seeing if that changes the pacing in that second half I think right now I'm frustrated with it because I was waiting every week and because I was so deep into it, trying to figure out why they were spending so much time on those things. But yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing I would change is, is how they utilize that time in the second half. 
for the story. I don't, I don't think I agree with that specifically watching them in a different sort of way, because uh, there's often the argument. Like, I often hear the argument anyway, where everybody says that you're supposed to be taking in these shows one week at a time. And they criticize people who binge watch something like anime, right? I don't necessarily agree with that position either. I think watching it later, six months from now, and watching it like more than one per week would be any different, I don't think. I think one of the things that definitely shows up when you're when you're binging it, like something like Macross Delta, is if there's any repetition. You notice it a lot more watching the episodes one after another than you do one week after another. Because there's obviously, you know, life happens in between. Um, improving the show for me personally, yeah, I would make sure that a lot of those episodes, like Cecilia mentioned, especially like, I think it was after episode 17 or something, there were the, several episodes one after another where it's just like treading water. And you can't have that happen. That was unfortunate when it was happening. And I know we were all getting like more and more frustrated. I remember listening to our episodes as we finished the show and just thinking to myself, oh God, it's happening again, another week, the second week, and then a third week, and then so on. And I think that really took away from the series. And then when we get to the end, everything is rushed. And then it doubly hurts. Those episodes that were just stalling and not doing much, it hurt that much more. Yeah, going back to the whole triangle thing, I think the first thing I would change would be um, have him confess and then have us be more invested in what happens in the conflict of maybe Hayate starting to look at Mirage differently. I mean, they don't have to change the ending or anything like that, but make it a true triangle and not just basically the same tease every time, you know, am I going to tell her? Am I going to tell him? I don't know. I mean, I see it as a trope in other anime, so maybe that's something that a Japanese audience is into. I'm not sure. But it seems like the drama comes from the fact that we already know that they like each other. Why not let them find out? And I think that's the thing with all the other mysteries that are introduced in the series. Have us be invested. Like, why was Messer so cold? Why not make him a little bit warmer to the point where we were invested in who Messer was and it would probably hurt a lot more if Konami and Messer knew that they liked each other. It does seem tragic that they find out right before he dies but they never really addressed it either. It's just something that we've come to accept on our own as fans. You know, that's where all those fanfic pictures come from and probably a lot of fanfics that we're not reading. But that would go across the board. Not just the triangle but the war, the other relationships that were going on in Delta. I do think it's fair that with plot points that are just kind of not addressed like remember in the beginning that they were putting a lot of emphasis on the fact that Arid and Johnson had been involved in the previous war for independence and like Johnson even trained or worked with Gramia and then that went nowhere like do you remember when they showed us the photo yeah. of them in front of the white plane which that didn't explain either why they decided to go from the white model that they had there to the current models either but that's probably not entirely necessary but they were putting that emphasis on that like oh yes Captain Johnson knew King Gramia and then and they didn't do anything with it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was just that face-off during episode 13. I guess that was supposed to be enough for us to feel, but it would have been a lot better if we had some background to go into. Uh, well, not even to... background, but like the way that Grammy and Johnson even just responded to each other. It wasn't even like, oh, my yeah. old mentor. It was, oh, you. Like, <laughs> what does that do? Oh, well. I just wanted to say a note on the color thing. Um, they, The knights, the aerial knights, actually mention color in response to how they used to be versus how they are now in the macro across Delta series and they used to say that they were like white knights before and they were like dark colored knights now and they yeah. were hoping to get back to being white knights after this war was over it's over <laughs> uh, unless we get a movie like everyone seems convinced that yeah, we're gonna get there, a movie well there could be one right I mean it, it happens a lot we're gonna get a movie I don't know I mean, if I want one though yeah that doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> Get over yourself, Cecilia. <laughs> <laughs> no movie. Uh, we're probably going to get different Valkyries. We're probably going to get one extra character so we could get statues or something like that. I don't know. More merchandising, more toy opportunities. And definitely another soundtrack. Two. One OST and one Walkery. Oh, Frontier had more than that. With their two movies, we'll get more than that with a Delta movie set, too. That'd be something interesting to know, too, about uh, the relative, I guess, success, uh, popularity of Delta versus Frontier. Yeah. That's a huge question. Actually, there was one guy on Twitter that said, oh, yeah, you guys are doing a recap episode. That's easy. Why don't you just repost your Frontier one and take out all the coolness factor? Oh! Ouch! That's, that's brutal! <laughs> that one hurt. 
<laughs> Plus, we didn't do a frontier recap. <laughs> yeah, we did, this could be our chance to do one. That's lethal, you know. <laughs> but Frontier didn't experience like a big boost in popularity until after the series was over, and that's when they started doing more of the promotional events, like the concert and that kind of thing. But Delta, we've already had a couple mini concerts, and then they've had the Valkyrie First Live that's happened already in Tokyo and Osaka, I think. And I think they have another one coming up. So that would be something to watch now that the series is over and they still have to drum up support to sell the rest of those Blu-rays. There's still six volumes to go. So I'd be interested to see what they're going to do to keep that going. So as far as the future of Macross and living in the wake of Delta, where do you think it's going to go or where would you want it to go? I'm going to be a little bit populist on this one and say that the racing idea is... It sounds amazing to me. It did before Delta and it still does now. The whole like an, maybe an alternate take on Macross the ride or a, a variation of it. It just sounds like Macross is a franchise that it could really benefit from something like that. Um, especially because it's different. Um, you still get to use your mecha. You can still have all the other options for Macross storytelling to a certain extent. You know, Maybe some of them will be there and some of them won't. But it just sounds like something like a jolt, like a completely new direction and format to go somewhere else and still like have all the Macrossy stuff there. So I, I think a lot of people talking about like a racing show. I've seen some comments on Facebook already. Um, some people have sent me in uh, messages on the Macross Mecha Manual saying they would like that sort of thing. And they've mentioned other things as well. But that's the big one that keeps coming up. And I'd have to agree. If they're going to do a racing one, I want it to be a Macross ride. I don't want them to introduce characters and then, you know, we're all excited about, oh, I, I wish we could see these guys in animation and then introduce a whole new factor you know what i mean you mean actually <laughs> so, use the, the designs from macross the ride what they could do i guess would be it still be macross the ride but maybe they could go forward in time and not have all the characters and not have all the ships so it could be like a fresh story for them but it would be nice for them to have an in-universe racing story and utilize everything that, um, not everything, but a lot of the stuff that they've already designed. Because we've looked at them, but we've never really seen them like animated and stuff like that, you know? So maybe half and half. Has there ever been an adaptation of a source material in Macross, though? Like, as far as I know, the animation is all, like, original. Like, they're all original <laughs> stories. Um, yeah. But if they were to adapt Macross the Ride, that would be the first time that the franchise has adapted from a separate source still within the franchise but it's not an original yeah. animation yeah very that true. might be kind of yeah. neat yeah they've never done it and that's why it's kind of frustrating because we have macross m3 we have um uh, other video games that had like really interesting designs macross 30 all those additional characters we'd like to see them maybe not even have their own show but it'd be nice to see mina forte or whatever however it's pronounced to show up in the in a macross series mm. or even like Something. an ova set from macross 30 yes because like not everyone's going to be able to play the game i mean i want to yeah. because i finally listened to planet's cradle like i've had planet's cradle for probably about two three years now and i finally <laughs> listened to it and it is such a jam i love it but i can't play the game because i don't have a playstation 3 and then if i do get a ps3 i can't play it because i can't read kanji so it makes it difficult if you limit it just to that source. So that'd be neat to see an OVA set for Macross 30. I would like that. That's something I would want to see more of also, OVAs from Macross. I mean, the space of time between two shows, it used to be five. And this time it was, what, eight between Frontier and... Yeah, it was eight years. Delta. So it'd be nice to get at least one or two OVAs in the, in the middle of those lulls. That way we're not super old when the next Macross comes out. Ugh. <sighs> You shut up. <laughs> I was just about to say, I, I think you're trying to be nice, but that, yeah, that hurt. <laughs> yeah, because if they take that much time. Imagine waiting 10 years, guys. Waiting 10 years for the next Macross. Wait 10 years from Macross Delta, and it's 2017 today. I'm going to be... Oh, lost transmission. Uh, yeah, by the time it airs. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out the calculator. How old am I going to be? <laughs> at least if they did maybe like a Walkery concert film, you know, like actually have good animations of them kind of like dancing and singing and the way they did for Cheryl in the, in, in the movies. Oh yeah, the, the, Nang, the Nyan Kri collection. Oh, that was okay. If it's done like flashback, then I'll take it. I didn't really like the way... Nyan Klee was done. I just mean the, the Min Mei animation in flashback, not the weird put together scenes. But if they did like concert scenes out of not all, but the good songs, <laughs> whoever decides that. 
or even like music videos because that's kind of the way they treated like Nyan Kli was like a set like a bunch of little music videos for Ronka and Cheryl which is why mm. you got the full Universal Bunny sequence because that kind of acted as like the PV for that song yeah uh, instead of the cut from the movie yeah and that was a great sequence I love it Universal Bunny is my favorite it's actually a surprise that in the history of the the IP that um, Macross hasn't included more official like music video style stuff as far as their animated material because you, you'd think that something like Macross would be you know ideally suited for that kind of format like a flashback uh, 2012 sort of thing is it's something that I would have suspected that we'd see more of there's so much opportunity for it because they basically the music is such a huge part of the franchise maybe not as like full-blown productions but maybe like intermediate productions you know something that's that happens like maybe in between now and the next uh, macross series they could do something like one or two of them or maybe three of them or something like that short little things maybe only like the length of a song but it would be yeah it'd be something quite cool and to give the fans something in between you know shows and they could use like they wouldn't necessarily have to take advantage of delta once a delta has done its run they could do like these sort of videos of you know all the other different uh, macross productions over time well and that's something that like idol anime is doing currently right now i know love live is probably the most prominent example that i can think of right now when before the anime show started uh when a new single came out they made a little animated music video that went with it that was of the characters from the show singing the single. They did that also for Love Life Sunshine when Aqua was dropping all their new stuff. So it's something that they could easily do. And I kind of wonder if Macross might take that direction next. But the other thing about Macross, like they follow the trends of what's there, you know, which is why every Macross seems to be so much more different than the last one, which is infuriating to, to fans who look back and say, this isn't what I wanted. I don't know if they'll necessarily make that same jump because... Macross, I don't think, fully considers itself to be an idol anime still. I think it still considers itself to be sci-fi mecha, and idols are just kind of a part of the overall story. Is there a possibility of having a Macross show without one of the elements present? Well, we already have that, right? Do we? Yeah, Macross Plus. Wait, mm, doesn't Macross Plus no, have No, Macross Plus though? is everything. Like, the, like no, Sharon Ma- Apple's Macross the bad Plus... guy. Macross Plus has no war story. It was a, more like a personal war. They had like the war scenes. I think that one counts as as all three. Like no, basically not, not it's, at all. it's um it's, it's a it's side mecha story. action. Yeah. It's a mecha action um idol and um triangle. Not necessarily. Mm. War. So you're you're saying the war isn't part of the the one of the pillars of Macross? Okay, well that it has. I been. think it's more me- so. mecha action. I mean, I've never really seen it spelled out as as a war or a mecha action, but I always just. Because of um, Macross Plus, I've always assumed that it was the mechs, idols, and triangle. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't Zero fall under that as missing one of the elements too? Because technically, there wasn't an idol. I mean, Sarah yeah. Sara was a singer, yeah. but she wasn't technically an yeah, idol. Yeah, that's true. So I guess it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I well, do I know at the very that, least uh, that yeah. Macross will like experiment. And maybe that's what Delta was, is experimenting with different things, you know, and trying out something new. And so hopefully we'll see something new, at least in the next installment. I think that's why to a lot of fans, the racing idea is so appealing because it is something like different that a Macross series hasn't done before, you know, not to that extent. I mean, there were, again, I guess Macross Plus would be a good example of like, there was a competition, an advanced fighter program, but that was like an an actual official development of a military weapon. That wasn't a, you know, a race. It wasn't public competition, boarding events, right? That's what this, a racing Macross show would be like. It'd be basically, it wouldn't even necessarily have to have any combat although i'm sure you know that would i'm sure so yeah. you know they, they'd weave that in there of course um yeah. for the action fanatics it would be showcasing definitely that sort of side of it which is like i said something that macros hasn't done and would be i think it would be ideal for it It would be a chance to take it into a, a different direction definitely um with a different type of story i think one of the things that like as a longtime macros fan that i'm actually a little bit frustrated at this point in the franchise is the last three television series we've had have all been sort of the same basic setting. You know, it's a it's a colony fleet that comes under attack. Yeah. It's been the exact same thing, like last three, like Macross 7, Macross Frontier, and now Delta, right? And it's just, uh, I mean, there's, you know, there's definitely more opportunities than that, right, for telling Macross stories. I mean, again, Macross Plus 
that had nothing to do with a colony fleet or even just like a, a war for that matter either like the first one was i like the format of delta i like the fact that they were on planets and then they had to go on the run again it was pacing that was wrong you know maybe they shouldn't have taken that much time being on the run or maybe they should have took more time i don't know but it was the format itself was different enough for me so it just wasn't successful as far as um pulling it off all right let's go with Celia's because you're about to leave you have like 10 minutes i think overall like delta was just a lot of fun and even though I've had some, you know, quite a few criticisms about the show, even while watching it. I did enjoy watching it. I would have liked to see some more things happen. Like Delta had a lot of potential with the direction it was taking some of its story. And I would have liked to see that potential actually followed through on. I really liked what they were doing, introducing Wright Immelman and the fact that he did actually drop the bomb. But then once you find out that they get the black box and then it changes course, like, and then that's just kind of dropped, like the end, that doesn't go anywhere. But, and the whole thing with nuns, where they're making them out to be the bad guys, but they still don't really do anything about it. You know, nuns are really painted in a very negative way in this series, but nothing's actually done with regard to that. There's nothing making them the villain. There's nobody trying to argue in favor of nuns and be like, well, you know, they weren't really intending to be bad. You know, it just looked that way. Their intentions were actually in a different place. But I did like Valkyrie. Actually, I really liked having an idol group. I know it's not the first time Macross has had an idol group, but I liked them because it added a new dynamic instead of having competing idols, which was fun in Frontier, but it's just something different for Delta, and I really like that a lot. My ship didn't win, but that's okay because my Kaname Messer raft is still afloat, <laughs> and Makina and Reina are still together in the end. <laughs> So I got two out of three, and that's not bad. I'm not sure about that Kaname Messer thing. I, I think they missed the boat no, entirely on that. it's a teeny <laughs> tiny raft. I see what you did there. <laughs> it's a teeny tiny raft. She saw flashbacks of Messer when she was in the neural network. Therefore, my ship sailed on a teeny tiny raft. More like Titanic. There wasn't enough room for two. <laughs> Are you saying they're Jack and Rose? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, just like uh, Raina said, somebody got jacked hard. <laughs> oh, okay. Walkyrie Trap. Have you guys listened to that recently? Yes. Okay. Oh, what's this? Walkyrie Trap is the second album for that came out for the series with the Walkyrie songs on it. And mm. I don't like it very much. What? There's, But there are a couple caveats to that. I don't know if I'm not liking it as much because... I'm currently like stewing on the things that, you know, I would like to see changed about Delta. And also because they didn't get the same amount of exposure as the songs on Walkyrie Attack did. The ones on Walkyrie Attack were used in at least one song in every episode for the first half of the series. But almost all the songs on Walkyrie Trap were crammed into that one episode where they had the special fundraiser concert or used pretty sparsely in between. So there weren't a lot of significant moments to go with those songs. And I was disappointed that they included Freya talking on God Bless You because I feel like it ruined it. Yeah, I was expecting that to be cut out. Like, like oh, I can't wait for that to be not part of the song. Yeah. The other thing that Walkyrie Trap suffers from, I think, is that it came out the same day as Utada Hikaru's Phantom album. And her Phantom album yes. is like miles better than the Walkyrie album. Sorry, not sorry. It's fantastic. So I've been I've only listened to Walkyrie Trap like maybe two or three times in full, but I've had Phantom on repeat since then. So I think that might be why I'm not enjoying Walkyrie Trap as much. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at the track list right now, and there's actually surprisingly a lot of songs here that I do like. I mean, there's a lot I've already dropped from my playlist, but there's a lot more than I expected in my playlist. Yeah, like, I mean, Absolute 5 is fantastic. Absolute 5 and Love Thunder Glow are really good. Um, mm. Here the Universe is kind of funky. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I like Oxia a lot better than Kaname Solo on this album, which I don't know the name of because I don't have it written in English. It's written out in kanji, so I can't read it. The Walkyrie birthday song just didn't need to be there. It sounds too much like a Christmas carol and not like a birthday song. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but I did like the Do You Remember Love arrangement that they had. It's kind of yeah. like a loungy mid-90s ballad a little bit. <laughs> So it kind of doesn't fit in with the with the other sounds on the album. But because it's Do You Remember Love, I like it anyways. I can already see somebody in crushed velvet crooning out some tunes. That's what it sounds like. If you listen to it, that's what it sounds like. And then like uh, Makina's song, uh, Onye no Ko, Girl, I'm not sure if I like it because it's a Teddy Lloyd song or if it's actually because it's good. I haven't decided yet. I think I need to listen to it a little bit more. It's actually in my head right now. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. It's a good song. Not great, but it's a good song. I can listen to it. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Trap isn't as strong as Attack. While Carry Attack was a lot stronger. And I think the way they utilize the music in While Carry Attack is better than the way they use the songs on While Carry Trap for the second half of the show. So I guess if you wanted to look at Macross as a whole, listen to While Carry Attack and listen to While Carry Trap. And you have basically the feelings of the first half and the feelings of the second half. Final thoughts in the series. You know, I think that I would probably, I mean, maybe it's too soon to tell, but I think I would probably recommend to new fans uh, Frontier rather than Delta at this point. Like if you're introducing it to somebody who had never seen Macross before, I think that Delta is a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, there were some aspects of Frontier that were that needed a little bit of work too, but I think overall Frontier comes out as a stronger series, which is unfortunate because it looked for a while that Delta was going to be like far superior, uh, especially that first half of the series. We were just like, I was just having a blast with it. I think one of the other things that really sort of makes me look a little bit critically at Delta is the fact that it turned me around and I was not for it and then I was for it in a big way and then it sort of uh, disappointed a little bit at the end. So I think that hurt a little bit more for the series overall. Okay, this is my whole problem with introducing all these pilots on both sides and I think I said it last episode. It's the fact that they could have had like all these rivalries and all these like great deaths that would make Messer's death not such a Roy trope. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, in every one of these shows, we get one guy that's an ace pilot that gets killed off. And that's fine, but we could go further than that once you introduce all these fighter pilots. And the fact that, you know, like a lot of them ended up living until the end is sort of like a failed promise. You know, I know they didn't promise it outright, but just having all these people that could fight each other and it's it being a war, you think they would play up the tragedy portion, you know, but yeah. they didn't. I mean, character deaths is one way to do it too, but also just character relationships as well. Like there was yeah. there was all sorts of opportunities for a lot of the, the aerial knights and the members yeah. of Chaos and Delta Squadron to interact with each other. I mean, how many like captures and escapes and captures and escapes and stuff like that did the series go through, right? And yeah. so there was so many opportunities for these characters to like hit each other's orbit and interact with each other and maybe in ways unexpected right and I, like you i thought that the whole point of having this massive cast of all these characters on opposing sides were to have these characters like hit each other and then have some sort of moment like or like in relationship that was unexpected or something or maybe even some of them like fall in love or maybe them some of them yeah. meet each other and realize that they know each other from some other sort of thing or there's like two of them that are like destined to meet and you know have a faded battle at each other's hands or something like it did, just anything like just throwing out ideas here and whatnot but it just it seems like again no, like totally a, a missed opportunity for such a huge cast with not much going on like I actually got a little it's a bit of a ship i will admit but i did get a little bit excited more for like the comedy angle when bogue started having his thing with reyna right yeah. because it just it yeah. seemed like okay this is what we should have been having between these two casts of characters like since yeah. the beginning of the show like isn't that what what all these characters are for to have these moments i mean it didn't even have to be like a relationship or anything like that i mean obviously reyna and mackin are, are definitely in their relationship but that comedy angle of it especially like that seeing that other side of bogue he's not just like a wild and crazy guy but he's this guy who's like really awkward around girls really sexually repressed that would have been a great story to play up for comedic effect you know one episode after another right and uh, there were so many opportunities for those two characters to also see each other and interact because of the various plot machinations of the series just as it is yeah they could also take it in a dramatic level because bogue had sisters that were killed in the <laughs> war previously and <laughs> reyna could have been, you know, maybe she looked like one of them. Yeah, yeah. Like, why be afraid of doing a Max and Maria trope as far as story-wise and not be afraid of that Roy trope every series, Yeah, right? And this would have been a perfect show to do it in because there were so many characters. And one side was all guys and, you know, one <laughs> side, the other side had a girl um, group. Yeah. Another missed opportunity yeah. as far as um, having all these characters you know, or having one of the aerial knights having affections for Kaname. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be returned, but then you have this guy who's obsessed with her on the Delta squad. Yeah. That would have been a great setup for Test the rivalry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just could be like on a war level and on a personal level. Too. Yeah. Just, oh, there's so many. 
Yeah. I mean, I know we're getting into fanfic territory, <laughs> but it's just an example of what you could expect with having so many characters. It doesn't have to be exactly what we say, but, you know, we're both just trying to say there's a lot of opportunity. Yeah, uh, anyway. absolutely. Yeah. Well, like, we're not shipping anybody. We're just, we're just, <laughs> we're just saying that this is a series that had an unusually large cast and they were completely underutilized in the interactions with other characters in the cast. They tried to make a um, a serious rivalry out of Keith and Hayate. And yeah. it kind of worked. There's a good setup. There's the opportunity. And then it's never actualized to any satisfying degree. Just look at the mecha side of it as well. Just yeah. the lack of any sort of like, you know, serious one-on-one transforming dueling at all. There was also this setup where um, Keith was like just incredible in the skies. You know, he was like unbeatable. It was like Messer like really had to try to take him down. And of course he failed, right? And then we had this setup where there's a guy that was incredible in Batroid combat. You know what I mean? Yeah, Hayate, with his, uh, Hayate with his dance moves and everything. Yeah, yeah. he should have been able to lure Keith down to the ground to where they had to fight in Batteroid, yeah. right? It would have made sense. People would have bought it. And just the fact that he had to fly Freya's wind. And that could have still worked. That could have still been like a, a thing. thing with yeah. Hayate. You don't have to take that away. But it would have given it would have given Hayate more agency in the particular conflict between him, him and yeah. Keith. Give him a lot more credit as a fighter, not just somebody that's using Freya's resonance. Yes. Right? Yeah. An excellent idea. Yeah. I, I but totally it was a agree. setup that was there. They're the ones that put that in. That's not fanfic. <laughs> Again, not fanfic. They introduced. They introduced it. it. Yes. Yeah. This is something. <laughs> this is the potential that they introduced with their own character, and then never saw it through. Yeah. Yeah. So the one thing I wanted to get into, as far as um, what Macross could be in the future, there's a common thread on the boards asking for uh, Macross to go back to its original tone. I guess with um, SDF, kind of like a more serious war. I guess, and I'm not really sure. As far as like if you could do that, because they emphasize so much with what music could do in this universe that I'm not sure you could tone the music back down to what it was as far as like what Min May could do. And all she did was really sing and bring up like emotions. They really played up the, the music part of it so much in Frontier and Delta that I don't see them rolling it back. What do you think? No, do you I... see a war? that's possible without music in, in the Macross universe? Uh, no, actually. Yeah, like, I don't think so. Like, one of the things, too, that I know, like, on the, the message boards and even Facebook to a, to a large degree and stuff, there is a huge desire to go back to um, the roots of the original. That This talks not only about the type of music, but also the type of story they told and, like, the type of science fiction that it was. Because I know a lot of people, myself included, actually, got very invested in the form format that Macross pioneered for itself. The amount of like cultural and character work that it would do in its series alongside the science fiction part of it, which also had elements of hard sci-fi, um, which was something that was new and innovative to anime at the time. The real robot genre, for example. I'm not really sure if that's like something that we actually really want as as Macross fans, and as something that's actually practical at this point. I don't think it's the. I don't think the market is there for that sort of show anymore. The real robot genre was very strong uh, during the 80s and uh, all the way up to the actually the mid 90s but i think with the advent of something like neon genesis evangelion it really started to go back to this sort of like hybrid where it merged the serious military mecha show with the super robot show and ever since then anime has sort of most anime not all of it but most mecha anime has sort of used that merging of it and i don't think that in this climate you can go back to one where it's separate anymore i think you kind of have to have that sort of uh that anime show that doesn't take itself too seriously but also has like some mecha action in it and it's presented in a semi-realistic way and i think that macross has sort of hit like a spot somewhere around there they're not exactly super robot but they enjoy doing a lot of crazy stuff with their mecha now that uh, i just don't think that they're going to get out of as a fan i don't know if i necessarily want them to go in a direction where it's like a more realistic real robot show anymore yeah i'm not sure either if they could go back i mean there are um super robot shows that 
don't contain all these um, elements that we talked about that are included in Macross and not any other um, show. Uh, there's the, you know, there's Alt Noah Zero, uh, there's Kurum Kuro that are like hardcore sci-fi but they still have those they're in the school and there's like a lot of humor i think if you if you stop comparing it to sdf and start comparing it to the other mech shows uh that are happening now it's not that far off i don't think it's that far off except for the whole idol thing i think that's what makes macross what it is and, and the transforming robots also yeah i think that there's a worry that if you change Macross too much and present too different of a story, that Macross will lose its distinctiveness um, compared to other mecha shows, and you'll run into a scenario where it doesn't feel very Macrossy, yeah. right? I think that's what concerns people more than anything else, and why there's always this call to go back to the original because it's the original was, you know, arguably the one the one Macross production with the strongest, the most Macross of the actual all of the productions that they've made, right? And I just don't think that's true. I think that, especially for me as a fan, like this is all like you know, of course, this is all our own opinion right i mean yeah. me macross plus worked brilliantly for me and i know some people don't like it as much as i do but for me it proved that macross could do something quite different both in style and scope as well whereas like these the macross stories are known for being these broad sweeping epics with personal stories in, involved it's like macross plus was all just small scale tiny scope you know no war no any, anything else like that and just very very intimate and personal just these you know just a few characters and that's it and the mecha were there because they were written in as part of the story and the action was there of course as well but it was just a it was a completely different story and i know like some people again criticize macross plus for being not very macross like because it doesn't include those elements but at the end of the day it's an anime that's very strong that worked brilliant and it was a macross anime i think the way that you make these work like uh, the ride thing and also the problem with delta i would think now that you mention it and now that i'm thinking about it and why macross plus works is because that's a small scale story which they had four episodes for or they had the movie version yep, four episodes and it worked in that context and then i would say something like macross the ride would be like a 13 episode one core type show and i think delta would have worked if it was just a one core show or maybe even one and a half i don't know they don't do that you know what i mean like 18 episodes but if there was a way to cap off the story to where it just works instead of trying to fill the 13 and or the 26 season necessity i think you got to know where to stop your story which is the the problem with a lot of tv shows right like people just don't know where to stop telling the story or yeah. they stop too soon yeah. sometimes you know they it seems like it's it's more and more rare, even with uh, even with the the creators like you know Kawamori and his his writing staff and everything like that. And I mean, they've been through this like how many times now, right? They know the show, they know anime, and they know how to make it. And it looks like uh, you know they can they can run into problems too. You know, it depends. One show might be more problematic than the other. Personally, like I said, just discussing the last two Macross series, Frontier versus Delta. I believe that as much as I have issue with some of the stories story elements of uh, frontier it seems now that uh, that frontier is the the better scripted it might not be the yeah. better written but it's definitely the better scripted of the two series it makes it it it's more satisfying it's more like dramatically fulfilling this the character arcs and the mysteries and stuff like that definitely come together at the end of the frontier series in a much more satisfying way than delta and it doesn't feel so like it doesn't feel like there was a lot of episodes which were wasting time you know whereas there were in delta i would have no problem re-watching uh, frontier and i already have once already and uh something like delta i think i might be a little hesitant maybe i'm saying that too too soon after having watched the series and of course <laughs> doing the show is has been a little bit more of a drain than just ordinarily just watching an anime on its own but it's also been fulfilling as well like i said i'm gonna miss watching yeah it, no matter what. <laughs> but you know it, we can all beg for a better series but i think it's a general feeling about this show that it, it dropped the ball halfway through i think i think so it. yeah i think so as well i think that's actually one of the frustrating things about going through the delta series and doing a recap show about it is that i don't really want to come down hard on this series because we did have so much fun like 
watching it and talking about it. I also want to make sure that, you know, we're coming across as honest. And at the end of the day, we kind of have to, you know, face up to the fact that like it or not, this show isn't going to go down as one of my favorites of the Macross IP. It has some of the elements of it. And one of the things that I, I want to say about the series is that those moments that I absolutely fell in love with, I still love those moments. And even if I don't go back to Macross Delta as a complete viewing experience from series beginning to end, I will definitely go back to certain episodes of the series and rewatch those whole episodes again because they were just, there were so many episodes of just pure Macross perfectness <laughs> you know so there were there were so many like moments in the series where they were just wonderful homages to the original or just like new reimagined versions of what makes you know the L- the macross series like as a story and as a you know as an animation work brilliantly and they had so many of those in the first e- even the first two thirds of the series to a certain extent they had those moments and they are not to be missed like those those moments any Macross fan should see because they'll squeal with enjoyment at them like we did. Yeah, I know um, episode 14 is going to be special, you know, once they took off all their clothes to <laughs> be able to navigate <laughs> in zero G and the uh, Macross Elysian had to, um, <laughs> to pretty much bone <laughs> the, the had to make it island. happen <laughs> with the the island yeah <laughs> those were gonna be like i'll be revisiting that episode <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is so funny but so true <laughs> you know it literally but, is yeah yeah, oh. no, there's a lot of great things. There, yeah, there is. There's just so many great moments that I wouldn't give up for anything. Um, and uh, just seeing this, the VF1 and all its CG glory, you know, animated in the early episodes. Oh, and and oh, it's God. like, oh my God. And then the one sequence where it shows Freya singing in the back cockpit with Hayate and they're both just yeah. doing their thing and just having a great moment. It's just like, it's so Macross, you know, such pure, you know, experience exceptionally refined product of Macross right there that is why we watch these shows, right? And that's what I think makes Macross Delta one of the, the more frustrating shows to come to a, a final sort of opinion on at the uh, now that the series is over. Yeah, overall, I, uh, I don't regret watching it. But like you said, I did proclaim it, you know, it was heading to be like my second favorite uh, Macross series. Yeah, then. <laughs> it was... So- uh, it was it, it was didn't. going it was going in that yeah. direction. I remember saying in some of the earlier episodes that I was like, I think this is going to be even better than Frontier, you know, which was a series that I really liked. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, and I was thinking, man, just the the writing and everything on these these episodes are just going by, and they are so tight, you know, that everything is just go working the way it should, and uh, they kept it going, and it was going and going and going. I thought, man, if they keep this up to the end, this series is going to be phenomenal. So uh, yeah, I was. The, it was too much to ask. For. Too much to ask. <laughs> it, was, it was too. Yeah. It was too good to begin with, it and then be it true, just, maybe yeah. That would have been so brilliant, right? If they pulled it off. Yeah. <laughs> where would we be if the first half was as good as the second half yeah <laughs> i don't want to say as bad <laughs> be different different story for sure but yeah i think we would have uh continued the show i don't know yeah, i don't know i asked Celia the same thing i think it would have been grueling for us i think we would have probably dropped it to tell the truth oh. and then maybe do like a uh like a wrap-up like what we're doing now towards the end uh-huh. but if it wasn't um great and it didn't have to be that good to begin with anyways. If it was just um, satisfactory, the first core, I think we would have gone you know, all the way. But if it was lacking from the beginning like this... We might not have like, made it through, you think? Probably not. Huh. It depends because, like I said, the first few episodes of the second core were actually not mediocre. They were better than mediocre. They were just good episodes. Then it took that drop, so... If you do, if you put that in the first core where you had like six good episodes and then it just became bad as far as fillers and all that stuff. And, you know, you're looking at, at another maybe, well, 20 episodes. If you're doing that from six and then it dropped in quality, you're looking at another 20 episodes. Yeah. You know what's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know if we would have, I guess we would have stuck it out just hoping that it would get better. Maybe. I, I definitely would have wanted to stick with it for sure. No, I would have watched it till the end. That's for sure. Yeah. But you don't 
not not sure if the show would continue talking about it i think it would have been hard okay like week after week because then you're just stretching griping about it i don't know i don't know if i would um, put people through that as far as people that were were listening yeah do they really need to hear um how bad a show is week after week yeah you know maybe not yeah yeah, it was a, it was yeah. messy, very very messy, and I yeah. So I guess it just depends, but um, nonetheless, we made it all the way through with this show, and uh, <laughs> I think it was uh, for me, it was definitely worth it. It was a fun ride all around, even though if it's not going to be like one of my favorite Macross series, I'm really glad that I went through it, and uh, I'm really glad that I was able to enjoy those like treasured Macross moments because I said like I will really go back to them again, and uh, there's something that's just there, there's 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 something special. It actually does give me hope for like the future series. If they maybe hear the fans for all the things that they miss, um, there was a lot of good things that they're still coming up with. Yeah, yeah. For every new show, so I'm actually excited about new Macross coming up, and hopefully they do oh, it yeah, more often. Absolutely. Awesome. Let's let's close off this part of the show. Uh, we're gonna split this last um, show into two. We're gonna do all the messages tomorrow but it's not tomorrow for you guys i don't know where where we're gonna release it if you guys noticed that celia had to go the last part of the show but she'll be back when we do the messages let's cut it off right here for now and um we'll be back with the second half of our wrap-up episode